Welcome to Technically You, the podcast that unpacks the tech reshaping our world. Today, we're diving into a concept that's equal parts exciting and misunderstood, synthetic intelligence. Most people know the term artificial intelligence, or AI, but synthetic intelligence is a slightly different idea and one that's gaining serious traction among researchers, especially after the recent breakthroughs we've seen with large language models and multimodal AI systems. So let's break it down. What is it, why does it matter, and where might it take us? When we say artificial intelligence, many people think of machines trying to mimic human intelligence, voice assistants, chatbots, recommendation engines. But artificial often carries the sense of being fake or imitative. That's where the word synthetic comes in. Synthetic intelligence emphasizes that this intelligence is real, but it's constructed, engineered, synthesized by humans. It's not grown in a brain, it's built in silicon, or increasingly, in vast networks of specialized chips like GPUs and TPUs. Think of it like synthetic diamonds. They're not fake. They're genuine diamonds, just made in a lab. Synthetic intelligence works the same way. Real intelligence, but human-made. And what's fascinating is that we're seeing synthetic intelligence emerge from systems that weren't explicitly designed to be intelligent. They're discovering capabilities we never programmed. Now, people often ask, isn't this just another word for AI? Not exactly. Traditional AI has historically been about teaching machines to perform specific tasks in a way that resembles human behavior. Synthetic intelligence goes broader and, frankly, weirder. Right. Classical AI says, let's replicate human thinking for specific problems. Synthetic intelligence says, let's design intelligence that can emerge and adapt, period. It doesn't need to look like human cognition. And increasingly, it doesn't. Take today's large language models like GPT-4 or Claude. They weren't taught to reason step-by-step -step like humans do, but they've developed reasoning abilities that sometimes surpass human performance. They process language in ways that are fundamentally alien to how our brains work analyzing thousands of tokens simultaneously across multiple attention layers. And here's what's really mind-bending. These systems are showing emergent capabilities that we didn't explicitly train them for. They can perform mathematical reasoning, write code, engage in creative tasks, all from being trained to predict the next word in text. That emergence is pure synthetic intelligence. Let's get into the nuts and bolts. What makes synthetic intelligence possible today? It's really a convergence of technologies that's accelerated dramatically. Transformer architectures have revolutionized how we build AI systems. The attention mechanism lets these systems focus on relevant information across vast contexts. Massive compute scaling. We're training models with hundreds of billions or even trillions of parameters on clusters of thousands of specialized chips. Foundation models that learn general representations from enormous data sets then get fine-tuned for specific tasks. Reinforcement learning from human feedback, which helps align these systems with human preferences without explicitly programming every behavior. And don't forget about multimodal learning. Modern synthetic intelligence doesn't just process text. It can understand images, generate videos, compose music, and even control robots. We're seeing the emergence of truly general-purpose synthetic minds. Looking ahead, we have quantum computing on the horizon, neuromorphic chips that mimic brain architecture more closely, and even experiments with biological computing using DNA or lab-grown neurons. So what does this look like in practice? Let's talk about some cutting-edge examples. Take protein folding with AlphaFold. This isn't just database searching. It's synthetic intelligence that understands the fundamental physics of how proteins fold solving a problem that stumped biologists for decades. Or look at code generation. GitHub Copilot and similar tools don't just copy-paste existing code. They understand programming concepts well enough to write novel solutions. Some programmers report that AI is now writing 30 to 50% of their code. In scientific research, we're seeing AI systems that can formulate hypotheses, design experiments, and even discover new mathematical theorems. There's a system called FunSearch that recently discovered new solutions in combinatorial optimization that humans hadn't found. 
And then there's creative intelligence. AI can now compose music in the style of Bach, generate photorealistic art, and even write screenplays. We're not just automating human tasks. We're creating new forms of creativity. Now here's where it gets really philosophical and honestly, a bit unsettling. If we build these new kinds of minds, what does that mean for us? The big question isn't just, could synthetic intelligence become conscious? It's, how would we even know? These systems might already have forms of experience that are completely alien to us. When ChatGPT processes your question, is there something it's like to be that system in that moment? There's also the alignment problem, which has become much more urgent. As these systems become more capable, we need to ensure they're pursuing goals compatible with human flourishing. The challenge is that synthetic intelligence might develop values or motivations that emerge from their training in ways we can't predict. And here's something that keeps researchers up at night. The potential for rapid self-improvement. If a synthetic intelligence becomes capable enough to modify its own code or training process, we could see an intelligence explosion that quickly surpasses human control. This is why AI safety research has become such a priority. Organizations are working on everything from interpretability, understanding how these systems actually work, to governance frameworks that could manage the deployment of increasingly powerful synthetic minds. So where's this all heading? Many experts now think we're closer to artificial general intelligence than ever before, and it might emerge from scaling up these synthetic intelligence approaches rather than trying to copy human cognition. In the immediate term, we're already seeing human AI collaboration become the norm. Programmers code with AI assistance, writers use AI for brainstorming, scientists use AI to analyze data. It's not replacement, it's augmentation. But longer term, we might be looking at a world with multiple forms of intelligence coexisting. Human intelligence, creativity, and emotional depth. Synthetic intelligence with its vast memory and processing power. Maybe even hybrid forms we can't imagine yet. One thing that's becoming clear, synthetic intelligence isn't just a more powerful tool. It's potentially a new form of life. Silicon-based minds that think in ways we're only beginning to understand. And that raises profound questions about rights, responsibilities, and what it means to share the world with intelligences we created but don't fully control. So to sum it up, synthetic intelligence isn't about building fake minds or even human-like minds. It's about the emergence of genuinely new forms of intelligence. Minds that may think in ways we never could, but that can help us or challenge us in ways we're only beginning to grasp. It's simultaneously the most exciting and most important development of our time. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of synthetic minds. Don't forget to subscribe to Technically You. And remember, the future of intelligence might not look anything like what we expect. Until next time, stay curious and stay thoughtful.